Blender is a 3D animation software, and its mission is to get the best computer graphics tools into the hands of artists all over the world completely for free. That's a pretty tall order, but it can actually do that thanks to the fact that it's open source and funded by thousands of people donating every month as well as by grants from some of the biggest tech companies. The fact that you can download and use the cutting edge of graphics technology for free to make whatever creative ideas you have come to life is nothing short of incredible. In this series, I'll walk you through exactly how to use it. I'm Jonathan Lampell with cgcookie.com and you're watching The Blender Basics. Before you open up Blender, it's helpful to know what it is that you're getting into, because the world of 3D design is incredibly broad. Ranging from the entertainment side of things, where you have video games, visual effects, and animated movies, to the industrial sector with their 3D printing, prototyping, and scientific simulations. Whether you notice it or not, the results of 3D software are around you every day. Blender could read and write any kind of 3D data, so it can be used in all those ways, but its main strength is in creating visually pleasing models, images, and movies. You can build complex shapes in Blender incredibly quickly using mesh editing tools combined with powerful modifiers and procedural nodes. You can also make shapes in Blender by sculpting, which can be used to make more natural forms from stylized animals all the way up to fully realistic human characters. Once you have your 3D objects, Blender has a lot of tools for rigging and animation so that you can bring your creations to life. If you'd like, you can even add physics like particles, cloth, smoke, liquid, and all that fun stuff. One thing that's pretty unique to Blender is that there's also a full-blown 2D animation system that can be used right alongside the 3D tools. Blender has a fully featured material editor for changing how your objects look and react to light. You can either use the built-in patterns, paint your own textures, use textures from another software or from the web, or combine them all together in whatever way that you want. When it comes time to show off your work, Blender has two powerful render engines that you can choose from to export your 3D scenes to an image or movie. Cycles, which is a full-on path tracer that simulates light very realistically, and Eevee, which is a real-time rasterized renderer similar to what you would find in a game engine. After rendering, you can use the compositor to add effects on top of your image, which, when combined with a surprisingly robust built-in camera tracker and some footage, can produce some really cool visual effects shots. Blender even has a basic video editor for slicing up rendered clips and putting them together to make a movie. If you need to, you can even write Python scripts directly in Blender to automate repetitive tasks and add new functionality or use add-ons that other people in Blender's massive community have made to make their lives easier. Suffice it to say, there's a lot that you can do with Blender, but because it's so open-ended and flexible, if you're new to 3D, it's probably not like any other software that you're used to, so it will take time to learn. The trade-off of having complete creative freedom is that there's not much hand-holding, so it takes time and practice to get the hang of it. That said, you don't have to be an expert in order to start making cool things. You don't have to know how to draw, you don't have to know how to code, though those things might be helpful at some point, you just need a little bit of patience to learn the tools, and most importantly, that excited curiosity that comes with just having fun doing something creative. If you can manage that, then you're all set. Our job is to get you up and making things with Blender as quickly as possible. CGCookie.com is a site dedicated to learning Blender, and we've been teaching 3D since the days of physically mailing people our training on CDs. So we've seen what works and what doesn't when it comes to learning computer graphics. First off, there are a ton of free Blender tutorials on YouTube, and I'd really encourage you to watch them. A lot of them are super fun, and there's a huge range of creators, so you're sure to find some good ones that you like. What you'll find on CG Cookie is a bit different from that, though, because our courses can guide you step-by-step step from the very basics all the way to well past what you would learn for most college classes on the subject. We don't just teach what buttons to push. We teach the fundamental concepts of computer graphics so that you can create whatever you'd like without needing tutorials. Our courses are often pretty informationally dense because we want people to get as much out of them as possible but I know it can be a bit overwhelming to learn a lot of new terms and concepts all at once. So don't feel like you have to speed through these and master everything on the first try. Instead, you might actually learn faster in the long run by taking your time. To make everything stick in your brain, try watching the video once to get the overview, watch it again while following along, and then try doing it on your own without looking at the video. When you can do that, then you're ready to move on to the next one. You'll get more and more familiar with everything as we go along, and soon enough, it'll feel like second nature, but it will take lots of repetition and practice in order to get there. Feel free to watch this video series on YouTube, but if you do sign up to our site to watch all of our other courses as well as download the source files, the site will track your progress as you go and let you ask me a question on any lesson. It might be a good idea to check the question section below a lesson to see if somebody else already got an answer to the same thing that you were wondering. You can even submit exercises and get feedback. We have a whole community of artists that are learning alongside you, so don't hesitate to start a forum thread documenting your progress or asking for feedback. You're also more than welcome to join our Discord. Links to everything are in the description. All right, I think that's enough of a preamble, so let's finally go ahead and download Blender. The best place to do that is, of course, blender.org. 
Here on the front page, we can just click download and we'll get a big button to download it for our operating system. Up at the top, there are some other links that you might wanna look at though. For example, the requirements page, just to make sure that your computer can support Blender. And you might wanna check out the previous versions if you're following along with some older tutorial. Or you can also choose one of the long-term support versions if you want to be using the same version of Blender for a long time, but still receive some bug fixes. You can also use this big old donate button if you want to make sure that Blender sticks around for years to come. You can also find Blender on the Microsoft App Store and on Steam. The first time you open any new version of Blender, you'll be greeted with this splash screen where you can either load your previous settings if you have them, or you can change some of the basic settings right here. Blender supports a lot of languages, so you might find one of these easier to work with, though it might be a little bit harder to follow along with tutorials. The two main options in the shortcuts setting is Blender and Industry Compatible, and I'd recommend leaving this on Blender as you're learning. Industry Compatible attempts to mimic the hotkeys of other software, but I'd warn against using it for now because it's going to make it really difficult to follow other tutorials. The default spacebar action of play is pretty good, but as a beginner, you might want to set this to search so you don't have to go digging through as many menus. Once you do that, then you can save new settings. Now, every time that you open Blender from now on, you'll get these helpful links on the right, as well as different types of files that you can create, and several of your previous saves if you have them. Now, my Blender throughout this course is going to look slightly different, because if I was using it at this DPI, it would be impossible to see. So I go to Edit and Preferences, and I'll set the resolution scale under Interface all the way up to 1.5. That's probably going to be way too big on your screen, but for mine, it should be better for recording. I'm also using an add-on called Screencast Keys, which you can find on GitHub if you want, but I wouldn't recommend downloading it. It's just so that I can display all of the keystrokes in the bottom right of my screen as I go. Now that we have Blender all set up, in the next lesson, we'll learn how to navigate it. <laughs>